Hey kids, welcome to module two, lesson five video. But this objective is going to really, really help us with the next several lessons. In fact, this lesson is one of my absolute favorites of the whole year because we are gonna use it so, so much. So in lesson five, the objective is to connect visual models, which are area models, and the distributive property to partial products of the standard algorithm. Now notice that this word partial contains the word part. And so it's just a fancy way of saying part of the product of the standard algorithm. And then I always like to say, AKA, we're gonna learn multiplying. So we're learning the standard algorithm, but through the use of this handy little model that is going to kind of point out where things go. Now, as with long division, uh, you might know that there are many different steps and you have to put this here and you divide, then you multiply and subtract, compare, bring down. Multiplication is a lot easier, but at the same time, you really have to put things where they belong. And place value still really, really is going to matter. You have to line things up very carefully. So let's take, for example, a problem like um, 23 times 31. Now look at the way I have it written here. So we're setting up to do double digit multiplication. But look at how I have it here in the area model. If I have 23 as my first factor, notice that I put 31 here on the side with the ones place on the top and the tens place given here. There's a reason for this and you have to do it the right way when you set up your area model. It's because when you do the first line of your uh, standard algorithm, you're taking the ones number and you're multiplying it by the entire factor up on top. So this product here, partial product, is the product of one times 23. One times 23, so you have 23 ones. This product here is the product of 30 times 23. So there's always going to be a zero here in the ones place because I've already multiplied with the ones. And when I use this distributive property, when I take it apart, we have to hold this place with a zero. Some kids will just leave that blank They'll just leave it blank. That's fine, that's how I did it forever. And so as long as you have this sort of leaning multiplication problem, if you have many, many partial products, it should kind of go this way. You can hold it with a zero or leave it blank, either way. I'm gonna try to put a zero there most times just to remind you that we have to think about place value. So 690 is the product of 23 and 30. Now, if you look at it this way with the standard algorithm, if I've already multiplied with the ones place, then I'm gonna multiply with three tens. The reason you hold this here is to get yourself so that you're working with single digits. Three times three is nine, three times two is six. So here, just like we've been doing in previous lessons, 23 times three is 69, and then the zero goes right here. It's that placeholder. Then you have everything lined up by place value. You add them up and you have your final product. So that's what this lesson is all about. Here's one more example, 343 times 21. Note again, the 21 is gonna be on the left side with the tens and the ones. The two tens and one one, 21. Upwards, that's the big thing today, upwards. Why, because the ones place is gonna be multiplied by your top factor. So one times 343 is 343. In the standard algorithm, you'll find it here. And then the 20 multiplied by 343 will get you here. But you can also think about it as two times 343 with the extra zero. The zero here will be in the ones place, add them up and you have your answer. I have a couple of crazy longer problems and something with a decimal. These aren't in the book. This is just for fun. I usually do super challenging questions with my class so that they can kind of get the hang of where we're putting everything and why. But you don't need to put that in your notes. It's just for fun. So let's get into this fun lesson. Yay. This is a really, really good one. Okay. So draw an area model and then solve using the standard algorithm. Use arrows to match. Very important 
the partial products from the area model to the partial products of the algorithm. So if I take my 34 times 21, I'm going to put 34 on top, make a big box, big box, so that you have enough room to split it in half. And then for the 21, we're going to put that on the side, and we're going to use 20 and 1. Make it look like this, and we only need two pieces, like the layers of a cake. Okay, so 34 times 21. Now, why did I choose it this way? Well, I'm choosing to put 21 on the side because we, I want to show you that the 1 from the 1's place is what I'm multiplying by 34 for my first partial product here. So when you multiply, you're setting this whole thing up, and we're going to multiply the top by each of the sides. 34 times 1 is 34, and then 34 times 20, well, it's really 34 times 2 with an extra 0. So put the 0 there to hold that place, and then 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 3 is 6. Now, go to the standard algorithm. Check it out. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 3 is 3. This is the same. Now this is 2 in the tens place. Okay, so this first partial product was 1 times 34. But this second partial product, that's going to be 20 times 34. So you can start by just putting that 0 there. And then 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 3 is 6. And look, we have the same partial product here, partial meaning part. Add them up, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, carry the 1, and you have 714, and that's your answer, okay? And you don't have to add these up over here. We're just showing the partial products that are helping you see the connection between this and the standard algorithm. So let's do another one. If I have 434 times 21, I'm going to make my box, divide it in half. 434 times 1 is 434. Let's move over to the standard algorithm. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 434 is 434. Of course it is, because 1 times any number is that number. Then 2 times 434 is going to go here because it's 2 tens. Hold that place in the ones with a 0. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. So you should have 8,680 as your second partial product. Let's double check. Hold the 0. 2 times 4 is 8. Then 6. Then 8. Add these up. If I didn't put the addition sign there. I just get a little lazy sometimes, but we're always going to add these partial products. 8, 9, 10, 11. 6 and 4 is 10, plus 1 is 11, and then 8 plus 1 is 9. 9,114. Some students say, please put the comma, and others, I sometimes just don't care. When it's only four digits, I sometimes leave it. Now, let's move on to the bottom part here. Now that you understand what you're doing with your multiplication, breaking it up into two pieces, we're going to use the standard algorithm only. Always the, the number with more digits goes on top. So 431 times 12. Give yourself some room here. Lots of room. I probably should have moved it up to give myself even more room. But first we're going to multiply with 2 times 431. So notice they're giving us really easy numbers to multiply so that we can not have to stress about our 7s and our 8s. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and plus with the 1s and 2s, there's not a lot of regrouping. Now I'm done with this one. So I'm really multiplying with 10. I'm going to hold this first spot with a 0. Don't forget this step. Hold it with a 0 in line 2 because this is 10. Okay, now I'm going to multiply just using this digit because I already held this place. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 4 is 4. Okay, now we get to add, and we get 2, 7, 11, and 5. 5,172. Let's do another one. 123 times 23. Okay, 3 in the 1's place. 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 1 is 3. 
Now this is really 20, it's two tens. Hold this spot with a zero so you can bump over to the tens place. Then go two times three is six, two times two is four, two times one is two. So I'm getting, I'm using this for the second partial product and I'm going ba-boop, 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 just like that. That's how you do it every time. Nine plus zero, nine, and then we have 12, and then we have seven plus one is eight, and then the two comes down, 2,829. Finally, 312 times 32, multiply. So let me scooch this over just a wee bit. Two ones, two times two is four, two times one is two, and two times three is six. All these are so easy because they don't want you to stress out. Just think about where to put it all. Remember, this is two times 312 right here. But the next one down is going to be 30 times 312. We still have to get the three times this whole top number. So first thing, hold that spot. Okay, I used to call it like a ghost zero. We're gonna hold that spot with a ghost. It's almost October, good time for a ghost zero. Three times two is six. Three times one is three. Three times three is nine. Add these up. Four, eight, nine, and nine. Nine thousand, nine hundred eighty-four. Okay, I hope that's really easy and that you're getting the hang of it. There are only two more problems. It's a very short lesson. Uh, but very, very important, okay? Now, let's read this one. Betty saves $161 a month. She saves $141 less each month than Jack. How much will Jack save in two years? So, it doesn't give us anything about Jack, but that's okay. We can make a tape diagram, okay? to show Betty's amount. Good job, Betty, 161. But she saves this much less than Jack. Let's show what Jack makes. Now, he makes all of what Betty makes and more, okay? Because she makes or saves $141 less than Jack. So what you want to do for Jack is you want to have everything for Betty plus the difference. Okay, now we're going to add these two in order to find out how much Jack saves per month. One plus one is two, and then six and four is ten, and then that makes $302 for Jack each month. Now what? So how much will Jack save in two years? So now we're using years instead of months. So you have to think about how much he makes in one month, okay? But how many months are in two years? So use that conversion. There are 12 months in one year. So double that and get 24. And if you need me to write that, you can do it this way, 12 months, in two years, so you get 24 months in two years. So there is our other factor. Now we've set up this double digit multiplication problem that we know how to do. So we're gonna apply our standard algorithm. Four times 302 comes first. Four times two, eight. Four times zero is zero, not four. Four times three is 12. Now, that was just the four times three, oh, two. For the next partial product, you're gonna take 20 times three, oh, two. Okay, two in the tens. First step, hold that zero. Hold it, hold that spot with the zero. Two times two is four, two times zero is zero, two times three is six, and there's nothing left. Put your line, put your addition, and then add those up. And so this is how much Jack will save in two years. Write it in a statement. Jack will save $7,248 in two years. There you go, there's your nice answer. 
Hope you like these videos. Come back and click subscribe. Come back again. I will try to help you some more. Last question. Farmer Brown feeds 12 and 1 tenth kilograms of alfalfa to each of his two horses daily. To each of two. This much to two. How many kilograms of alfalfa will all, both of his horses, have eaten after 21 days? First thing first, 12 and 1 tenth kilograms is for each horse, but there are two of them. So let's get all the alfalfa first. So if I have 12 and 1 tenth times 2, it's going to be, end up being 24 and 2 tenths kilograms for two horses every day. Okay, so this is your one amount each day. Then, how many kilograms of alfalfa will all of his horses have eaten after 21 days? So the, the, if you want to use your area model to show you, we're going to take our 21 and put it on the side again. Put your line through the middle. And on top, we will have our 24 and 2 tenths. Now, any number times 1 is that number. So you can put 24.2 or 24 and 2 tenths in the top. Now, what about this one? Okay, so we have the 2 in the tens place, but we do have the extra 0. So if I was to multiply 24 times 2, I'm sorry, 24.2 times 2, then I would have 48.4, right? Now, if I had 48.4 and then I multiply that by this last place value position, by the 10, I would end up with 484, okay? So 48.4 times 10 equals 484. So that's what's happening here, okay? It's in order to consider this zero. Now, if we use the standard algorithm, Put 24.2 times 21. Sorry, I'm looking around, trying to read too many things. So two, 1 times 2, now we're going to do our standard algorithm. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. Hold this with a 0 because we're done with that. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And then 2 times 2 is 4 again. Don't put the decimal in here. We don't use it here because it's tenths here times ones. So our answer will be tenths. So here we go. Add them up to 8, 10, 5. And then we have our decimal here at the bottom. 508 and 2 tenths. And of course we know it's tenths. You don't have to have tenths, tenths. But just to show you that... <clears throat> that it would be 484 ones, okay? And then this would be right here. So, but we don't have to put that until we're finished. So the standard algorithm, we don't use decimals in the middle in the partial products. We only put it in the final product. And so this is how the area model should look. And this is how your standard algorithm should look. And then we write our final answer with our label. Uh, he will, oops, he's feeding the horses. The horses will uh, have, go back to the question, how many kilograms of alfalfa the horses will eat 508.2 kilograms of alfalfa. How do you spell alfalfa, A-L-F-A-L-F-A, -F -A -F -A, in 21 days? There you go. Hope that was helpful, and we will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye now.